All right. Good afternoon. Earlier this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the UN's Holocaust Memorial Ceremony, which this year marks the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau camp. The Secretary General spoke of the recent resurgence of anti-Semitic attacks around the world, saying that our solidarity in the face of hatred is needed today more than ever. He said we need to name this phenomena for what it is. There is a global crisis of anti-Semitic hatred, a constant stream of attacks targeting Jews, their institution and properties. He also drew attention to the initiatives designed to counter such hatred, including the UN strategy and plan of action on hate speech that he launched last year, and the UN plan of action of safeguarding of religious sites. <clears throat> the Secretary General added that new surveillance technology can also be abused by both governments and corporations to enable discrimination and deny people of their rights. He said the high-level panel on digital cooperation had recommended actions to safeguard human rights in the digital age, which will include working with partners to develop standards for fair, accountable, and transparent artificial intelligence. On Saturday, the Secretary General also spoke at the Parkey Synagogue on the Upper East Side here in New York, which he has visited every year since becoming Secretary General, and in his remarks there, he stressed that the United Nations stands with you every day, together with many people around the world who believe that an attack on one is an attack on all. And also, I just wanted to flag that due to scheduling uh, considerations and issues, we were postponing the Secretary General's press conference by a week, and we will see you next uh, Tuesday, the Tuesday, a week on 3rd February uh, for the press conference. The, turning to Syria, the UN remains deeply concerned about the safety of over 4 million civilians in northwest Syria, over half of whom are internally displaced, following reports of ongoing airstrikes and shelling over the weekend. The UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights reports that over 1,500 civilians in the northwest of Syria have been killed since April, when the current military escalations began, including 430 children and 290 women. Since December 1st, an estimated 389,000 people have been displaced. That's an increase of more, excuse me, an increase of more than 30,000 since last week. The vast majority, about 80% of those people who are being displaced are women and children. In this latest, the latest displacement compounds are an already dire humanitarian situation on the grounds in Idlib, where more than 400,000 people were displaced between the end of April and the end of August, many of them multiple times. We continue to call for cessation of hostilities and urge all parties and those with influence over the parties to ensure the protection of civilians, the protection of civilian infrastructure, and that's in line with their obligations under international humanitarian law. Turning to Libya, the UN Human Rights Office in a new report today on the airstrikes last July on the Tajura detention center in Libya renewed its call on all parties to the conflict in that country to conduct independent, impartial, and thorough investigations to ensure accountability for the violations of international law. The report concurs with previous UN findings that the airstrikes were likely conducted by aircraft belonging to a foreign state, noting that, quote, it remains unclear whether these air assets were under the command of Libyan National Army or were operated under the command of that foreign state in support of the LNA. The report quote, calls on all parties as well as any state supporting either party to conduct investigations in the airstrikes with a view of ensuring the swift prosecution of those responsible. Over the weekend, the UN support mission in Libya deeply regretted the continued blatant violations of the arm embargo in Libya even after the commitments made in this regard by concerned countries during the Berlin conference. The UN mission said that over the last 10 days, numerous cargo and other flights have been observed landing in Libyan airports in the western and eastern part of the country, providing the parties with advanced weapons, armored vehicles, advisors, and fighters. The UN mission condemns these ongoing violations with risks plunging the country into a renewed and intensified round of fighting. Meanwhile, the special representative of the Secretary General for Libya, Ghassan Salami, is currently in Tunisia, holding meetings and preparations of the security track and the political tracks of the peace process. <clears throat> and on the coronavirus, I wanted to flag that the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, arrived in Beijing today. He is expected to meet with senior Chinese government officials to discuss the coronavirus outbreak. WHO has stressed 
that we have a chance to get ahead of the virus if we all work together. It has provided advice to countries on how to identify and care for people sick with the virus, as well as those individuals, and how individuals can protect themselves and others. You can find information on the WHO's website. And a new report from Colombia on the situation of children and armed conflict concludes that the peace agreement between the Colombian government and the FARC-EP, which contained child protection provisions, contributed to a significant decrease in violations committed against boys and girls. Ms. Virginia Gamba, the Secretary General Special Representative on this issue, commended the government of Colombia for its efforts to protect boys and girls, but she pointed out that more than three years after the signature of the peace agreement, children continue to be exposed to grave violations as other groups are occupying the space left by the withdrawal of the FARC-EP. More information online. And also, we have an update on the measles outbreak in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Although case incidents showed a decreasing trend in December, the cumulative number of cases and deaths has continued to increase, with over 6,000 deaths reported last year. Cases of measles continue to be reported in all 26 provinces, including the provinces of Ituri, North Kivu, and South Kivu, which also affected by the Ebola outbreaks. The majority of the measles cases, 75% of those cases, are impacting children under the age of five. The emergency of new cases is likely a result of persisting gaps in the vaccination coverage, which needs to be scaled up accordingly. $40 million are needed urgently in order to extend the vaccination to children over five and to reinforce outbreaks uh, response activities uh, beyond a vaccination. Another reminder to vaccinate when you can. Um, and in Madagascar last week, uh, following heavy rains and flooding caused by tropical disturbance, there's been an impact to 107,000 people and caused at least 31 deaths. More than 16,000 have also been displaced. The government is leading the response with support from the UN and humanitarian partners who have mobilized and prepositioned stocks to assist people impacted by the floods. And as you may have seen over the weekend, we issued a statement uh, where the Secretary General said he was deeply saddened by the loss of life and destruction of property in the wake of an earthquake in the Elazig province of Turkey. Um, and that statement was shared with you. Mr. Bays. A couple of questions. First, a clarification. Um, you say the Secretary General can't be with us tomorrow because of a scheduling conflict. Can you tell us, is he in New York at 12.30 tomorrow, and what is he doing? Uh, there is the uh, global town hall meeting with staff uh, and other issues which may run over, and there are other issues uh, that have come up. But these were, that was pre-planned, wasn't it? I mean, it, I said, a, I said, no, I understand, it raises just... the question that the only problem is that mm. he's scheduled to give a news conference on the same day as the Middle East peace plan and would face some difficult questions. I think the Secretary General is uh, experienced and can face difficult questions. OK, my question's on the Middle East peace plan. Has the Secretary General been given adva an advanced copy by the US administration? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, and at this point, uh, obviously, we have to see what the release is. And I have no other comment. This so time. if he hasn't been given, you're not aware of an advanced copy being given to the Secretary General. Does he believe that, given his very important role in this, as a member of the quartet, as the Secretary General of the United Nations, where the UN is where all the Security Council resolutions are, does he feel that it's disrespectful of the Trump administration not to be consulting him and giving him an advance copy? Uh, as I said, I think we all have to wait uh, for this plan to be uh, released, whenever that, uh, that will be. We will have further comment uh, at that time. In the meantime, the Secretary General's own position on it have not uh, have not changed. You didn't answer my question, though. Does I, he believe I, I, it's disrespectful? I answered, I answered it to my best of my ability. Yes, Madam. Follow up on the same subject. Uh, do you was he consulted uh, in any of the? Uh, if you said he wasn't given uh, um, any advanced um, copy of the plan, was he con consulted, or his envoy in uh, Jerusalem was consulted? Regarding this plan, uh, any time? I mean, over the last uh, three years or two, two, I mean, since the secretary, since the announcement of that the plan will be coming, there had been contacts at various levels, including the secretary general, Mr. and Mr. Mladenov. So, are you saying that you are aware of the details of the plan, or what exactly are you saying? No, that's. I'm just saying that there have been conversation over the last uh, two to three years uh, on this, but. And uh, I will leave it at that. Yes, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, 
<clears throat> on the new coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, last week there was a closed meeting of the major emergency experts from OCHA, UNICEF, WHO, etc. Can we have some kind of a reading on what they have decided to do? Because we were told that meeting was aimed at helping fragile countries that might not be able to deal with such a virus themselves. Yeah, unfortunately, I have nothing for you on that meeting. Errol. Yeah, uh, just actually, it's, it's a follow-up, although I have a separate fund on Libya, but uh, it also all the time raises the question, Stefan, um, how much UN is involved in these kind of processes, whether it's more passive, more active role. So what, how would you characterize the involvement of the UN? The, our, our involvement is regulated through secu relevant Security Council resolutions. We have a special coordinator on the ground, uh, Mr. Mladenov, and as you know, the UN has extensive uh, humanitarian operations uh, in the area. And what would be the leadership of the Secretary General in that direction? to move a little bit forward beside that I, I think limits. the Secretary General's position on the Middle East peace process are regularly uh, shared with you through uh, public briefings in the Security Council. May I ask one on Libya? Or? You may ask one on Libya. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, Foreign Minister for Germany was very disappointed by the progress, actually lack of progress of the follow-up on the Berlin peace uh, process. Pre uh, uh, peace conference, he said that the Security Council should be uh, informed. What is, again, the role, role or what is the position of Secretary General? Well, I mean, we, we share the disappointment expressed uh, by Mr. Salome of this continuing violation of the arms embargo. I mean, as I just flag, uh, we're seeing uh, flights continue to arrive in different parts of Libya, disgorging weapons, troops, armored, uh, armored carriers. Those are blatant violations of Security Council resolution. Uh, Mr. Salome, for his part, is pushing forward, as we always do, on the political track with trying to organize and set up the number of meetings that he had flagged on the military issues, on political issues, on economic issues. We will continue. Uh, to persevere and push for the political track. But obviously, uh, the parties on the ground uh, need to honor uh, a cessation of hostilities. And all those parties who are helping one side or another uh, need to abide by the commitments made in Berlin and need to abide by Security Council resolutions. Nabil. Uh, back to the peace plan. It seems that the plan will address the borders issue. So can you please remind us <clears throat> what's the UN position on Israel's borders and the Palestinian okay. state the, the, border? The, the Secretary General, the UN's position uh, are reflected every month or more than once a month in the Security Council briefings, and you can refer those to that. His Secretary General's positions are unchanged. Sorry, yeah. on Corona, uh, did the UN evacuate <clears throat> any personnel from No, not China? that I'm aware of. Hi, yep. Steph. Hi, Steph. It's related to the coronavirus, and it's going to take a second to lay out the question, so I appreciate your patience. Um, the International Civil, Civil Aviation Organization has recently been blocking people on social media. It looks like it's at least a couple dozen people. That include think tank experts, researchers, writers, journalists, citizens. And they all have a common thread, which is that they're saying Taiwan should be receiving information directly from the ICAO, not that they should be a member of the ICAO, but that they should be receiving, as a regional transport hub, information directly from them. Um, ICAO has responded saying that it reserves the right to get rid of irrelevant, compromising, and offensive material. So I wanted to see your thoughts. The head of the ICAO, by the way, right now is a Chinese national, uh, someone from the PRC. And so I'm wondering if you see this as a politically motivated way to silence Look, uh, uh, opinions. What, one, one of your colleagues, I think, just emailed me the same question. I'm in touch with, I've reached out to ICAO to see uh, what exactly is the issue. But ICAO is, uh, is a... Um, 
is an agency with its own uh, governing uh, body, not under the authority of the Secretary General. But I, let me see what I can find out from my KO. James. Um, thanks, Stefan. It's another question on the Middle East peace, uh, peace plan. Um, you said a few times that the Secretary General, his position hasn't changed. It's been stated in the Security Council again and again. Um, uh, are you saying that you don't think now is the time to make any changes to this, or are you willing to see what the Americans put forward I'm, tomorrow? I'm not, that's not, well, all, to... I'm, all I'm saying is that the Secretary General's positions are unchanged, and they're, uh, they've been related to you uh, uh, Re 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 repeatedly. Um, does, he have, does he have an open mind and is he willing to look again at some of these bedrock principles? I, I will leave it at that for the time being. Yes, madam. Um, a, a follow up on the Middle East plan. So let me um, paraphrase th my question this way. So uh, does the Secretary General uh, or is the Secretary General disappointed regarding the fact that uh, a peace plan will be announced, uh, a so called peace plan will be announced tomorrow? When uh, we're a, par a partner or a main uh, a partner to, to this uh, plan is made absent. So, what's your Look, comment? I, I, on? I'm not, uh, I, I, I understand what you're all trying to get and what you need, um, but I'm not going to get uh, into saying anything further until, uh, until there's an announcement. No, but I'm not talking about the plan itself. No, I'm no, asking I, about I, the I, fact I, I, that I somebody who is a, is a main partner no, no, I, 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 is I made I, I understand, but I will not get into okay, it. Okay, I have some, uh, a question about Iraq. Lovely. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, any, I mean, the demonstrations in Baghdad and other parts of Iraq, uh, has, uh, they have been continuous, peacefully mostly, and the killing and injuring of civilians and also continuing. Uh, any comments and uh, is your representative there uh, in contact and negotiation with uh, different parties? Yes, I mean, the, the UN uh, on, on the ground continues to be engaged uh, with the Iraqi authorities and, uh, and Iraqi civil society. I think the... the in Iraq, as in other places around the world, uh, there is a discontent, and leaders need to move forward, listen to the people. Uh, the, the new government needs to be formed, but this is, Iraq is a, is a sovereign country, and the, it is, will be the decisions of the Iraqi, uh, of the Iraqi leaders, but we have been concerned by uh, the continued uh, violence, by the attack, on, on demonstrators, some of them we understand have been subjected to, uh, to horrendous treatment and these things are of concern to us and they've been raised directly with the Iraqi authorities. Are, are you there uh, or is there somebody, I know that the, uh, Mrs. Janine, uh, she, she went once uh, since October, I'm not sure if she went again to Tahrir Square in Baghdad. Is there somebody uh, from the UN who is monitoring or... Uh, I mean, we are, I will find out how detailed the monitoring is, but I mean, you know, we are, we have quite a large presence in, uh, in Baghdad and our team there is full, well aware of what is going on on the ground. Edie, and then we'll go back to Mr. Bayes. Thank you, Steph. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comment on an attack uh, yesterday that killed 20 um, Malian soldiers at a base near Mauritania, which appears to be uh, an extremist attack. Um, yes. Uh, or the head of the mission, Mr. Um, Anadif, condemned the, uh, the attack, on the cowardly attack on his, uh, via Twitter. He expressed his heartfelt condolences to the bereaved families and wished a swift recovery to those injured. Um, we are, uh, the mission itself deployed to the area of the attack today uh, to support the Malian armed forces and reiterate its commitment to support peace and stability in Mali. James, and then. Uh, yes, so two questions. One is a follow-up on Libya. Eight days now after the Berlin conference, General Haftar is um, clearly pursuing a, an offensive on a number of fronts, and now the GNA, Prime Minister Siraj, saying that they are debating whether to continue in this process. How disappointed is the Secretary-General that rather than 
after Berlin there's an improvement in the situation, things seem to have deteriorated so badly. And specifically, can you tell us whether the um, meeting that is supposed to take place in Geneva tomorrow of both sides is going ahead? Uh, I need to get some details on uh, on the meeting. I know Mr. Salome is working hard uh, towards making those things happen, but I need to get some details. Listen, uh, it doesn't take a genius to see that we're going in the wrong direction, right, on the ground. As I said, the arms keep flowing in, the fighting is continuing, and the Libyan people keep suffering. Uh, we're, of course, very disappointed in the situation, but uh, we will continue to push ahead uh, for a political solution with Mr. Salame uh, in the lead, and we will continue to support, to provide whatever humanitarian assistance we can. Uh, and my other question was uh, just an update for us. You told us a number of times, and I know this has drifted. I always, you, uh, I always get nervous when you say you told us. No, but about, about the, the, the timeline yeah. for the Board of Inquiry yeah. on yeah, Syria. Yeah. And you said that you were hoping now the new timetable was by the end of the month. We have yeah. four days left. Will it happen by the end of the month? We do have four days left. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Stefan, today is the 75th anniversary of one of the darkest events of the humanity the Holocaust. But throughout uh, all these years, many other dark events did happen. Uh, genocides, mass killing, starting from Rwanda, Bosnia, Kosovo, Syria, even denial of those crimes. What it can be done to stop this craziness? By not it's, just it's, being it's, it's reactive a, it's a, it's, it's, That's for Nobel Peace Prize questions. <laughs> the, yes, and... First of all, is to never forget, never be uh, complacent, and continue to speak up every time atrocities uh, occur. Nabil. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. um, the violence against protests in Lebanon has escalated uh, dramatically in yeah. the last week. And now we have a new government in the country. Do you have a new message to authorities uh, in Lebanon on this? Uh, you know, I haven't gotten an update from Mr. Uh, Kubish, but I will try to get one. Also in Lebanon, um, there is a big crisis in uh, uh, flow of, uh, of cash, uh, U.S. dollars in the country. Did the U.N. suffer by any way <clears throat> Sorry, from this crisis in the country? How no, do you I'm, get I'm your, not, I'm your not funds aware to that there have been any repercussions on the UN's programs, whether on humanitarian development or, or peacekeeping in Lebanon. So d does the UN use the banking system in Lebanon to transfer or to wire well, we are, its you, funds? Listen, I, I will just say that I've not been made aware of any issues. Mm. We, of course, like in any country, uh, whenever possible, and that's the vast, vast majority of places, we use the local uh, banking system. Can, is it possible to get more details on this? It is always possible to ask for more details. We'll see if more details can be had. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. <laughs>